Okay, Shalom, Yashirala. Shalom, Shalom, Israel. Yeah, this is the brother Nathan. It's the brother Bana. And we're coming at you through a joint, you know, with a joint lesson through the spirit and power of blessing and the grace of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And uh, Lord willing that this lesson will be edifying, comforting, and exhorting to the hopeful elect of Israel. But first and foremost, we'd like to start off by giving all honor, glory, and praises unto our power. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakak, Wadash. We'd like to give double honors to the head apostles, to the elders, bishops, teachers of the great millstone who rule well and teach well across the four winds with sound doctrine. That's right. To the like-minded brothers, the Akim, who are under the umbrella, pushing the truth and sincerity all in one accord across the four winds. All right. Uh, shalom. Shalom. Peace be unto you and your households. All right. Peace, citations of the hopeful elect, the house of David, the tabernacle of David, consisting of the 12 tribes of Israel, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, Haitians, West Indians, Israelite foreigners are scattered abroad. Those who derive from the seed line of our forefather Jacob through Abraham and Isaac, you make up the 12 tribes of Israel that the Bible speaks of. May you seek repentance and salvation in these latter days. And shalom to the Akim and Akiawa who are tuning in. Okay. Peace and blessings. Now, uh, real quick, just, uh, you know, through the spirit, we want to get into another installment of Gears of War. As Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai has things turning up. As Elder Apostle Tahar deemed 2022, the year of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai turning up. Gears of War turning. And it is only a matter of time, you know, before uh, you know major conflict is uh, is going to take take place abroad, and ultimately here in Babylon, America as well. But of course, we know that the prophecies must continue to unfold, and the MOTB pursuant to Revelation chapter 13 must come before the third world. However, things are turning up, tensions are rising. Let's get into the a reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 13 and verse one: the burden of Babylon which Isaiah, the son of Amos, did see. That's right. The burden of Babylon. So, that's so Babylon, America, okay? Let's get into the term, the burden. Strong's H, 4853. Massa. Massa. Okay, so Strong's Hebrew, Massa. It's a load, bearing, right? Burden, okay, carrying. Also, it says tribute, but also an utterance, an oracle. Okay, so let's get into that term oracle. Go into the etymology, etym online for oracle, which goes into a message from a God expressed by divine inspiration through a priest or priestess, right? So it goes on, okay, for a few other things. It says divine announcement, an oracle, okay? So I am one of the scriptures say to speak as the oracles of the most high mm -hmm. through, uh, first Peter. Mm -hmm. That's right. Therefore we speak as we are mouthpieces, vessels mm -hmm. for Yahweh Shai. That's right. You know, so a burden against Babylon again, Babylon America. Okay. A representation here. So I have to add on to that. Grab a It's a reading from the book of Joel, starting at verse 3 and 9, chapter 3 and verse 9. It's locked here. Uh, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, prepare war, wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up. That's right. So proclaiming these things, right, as an oracle speaking of the oracles of the Heavenly Father, right? So proclaiming this thing as, as it is a divine inspiration, as the scriptures are. Okay, divinely inspired by Yahweh Bashim Shah through the Holy Spirit. Right, so prepare war in that time. Again, wake up the mighty men, right? These times, people, these countries, these leaders, the Heavenly Father has put in the Spirit on these nations and their leaders to prepare war. That's right. The mighty men speak of men of war. Mm -hmm. It says, let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say I'm strong. Mm -hmm. That's right, man. So they're they're using all their assets, their their monetary goods, and so on and so forth to invest into uh, you know military might, missiles, artillery, okay, military technology, so on and so forth. They're willing to to um, you know 
give their people less, okay? And they're willing to take away from the people in order to build up their military might, okay? As is done here in Babylon, America, too. So it's just general, you know, that's, those are the principles they live by, you know? That's right. Just as it was in World War II, you know, many of these uh, textile factories, different uh, manufacturers transitioned from what they're manufacturing to manufacture weapons, mm -hmm. you know? Turning those uh, things into, um, you know, modalities for war. Mm -hmm. As the scriptures say there, beat your plowshares into swords. Mm -hmm. So no longer focusing on the agriculture, but more so on weapons of warfare. It says, uh, assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither, cause my mighty ones, cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Yahweh Shah. Mm -hmm. That's right, man. So Yahweh Shah is going to put the spirit again on these, all these nations, okay, to come together to align themselves to come into uh, partnerships and, and, you know, coalitions, if you will, right? That's right. That's what the word assemble means, mm -hmm. to put together. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right, man. So they're drawing the line in the sand right now, and they're choosing a side. You That's know? right. Alliances being formed. You see these BRICS nations and, mm -hmm. you, know, uh, you know, the EU uh, dealing with certain nations that are applying for it or pulling out. So, you know, they're uh, getting assembled for the battle, for the war. That's right, man. These NATO EU nations are seeing the building, okay, the uh, relationships becoming strengthened on the BRICS side as well. So that's right. You know, cause that mighty ones to come down, and that's talking about coming down to the third well. You know, mm -hmm. speaking of uh, the Valley of Yahweh Shaphat, which mm -hmm. will be there in the Middle East, mm -hmm. according to uh, two hundred three. That's right. So we'll start off with uh, one of the articles here. Now, this was a few weeks back. This is uh, August 9th. Insider paper reports Turkish drone strike kills four in northeast Syria. All right. So it says a Turkish drone strike killed at least four people in the northeast Syrian city held by Kurdish forces. All right. So continuing on down, it says the four victims all affiliated with the administration were killed while they dug trenches near Turkey's border in anticipation of a new offensive that... Ankara has threatened to launch since May. Right? So it says the Kurdish-led Syrian Democratic Forces confirmed the attack in a statement calling the four quote-unquote fighters. Right? Okay, so it says they've launched uh, success, successive military op offenses in Syria. Right? So it says Turkey has stepped up in its drone strikes in Kurdish-controlled areas of Syria since a July 19th summit with Iran and Russia uh, failed to greenlight a a fresh offensive according to Kurdish officials all right so of course you have conflict here okay now let's continue on here now it says insider paper reports Turkish defense delegation to visit US for jet talks okay so it says we'll visit Washington okay to follow up on President sleepy creepy Joe Biden's pledge to deliver F-16 fighters for Turkey's aging Air Force Okay, so now you got the U.S. fighting this proxy war, contributing to this proxy war right now that's taking place over in the Ukraine against the Russians. Okay, they're funneling money, technology, military training, so on and so forth. Okay, weapons, ammunition, right? So now this is going to, you know, further um, aid, you know, additional conflict that's going on abroad. Okay, so now it says... Uh, says it's going on it says nato member turkey was kicked out of the f-35 joint strike fighter program over its acquisition of an advanced russian missile defense system in 2019 right so turkey kind of you know playing some doing pulling a couple moves that that uh, you know ain't, ain't sitting well with its fellow nato members right and things as such so that's why the uh you know they kind of looked at like with that if looking at the being looked at sideways if you will Okay. And I believe uh, Turkey was one of those nations, right? That was uh, applying for BRICS membership. Correct. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's the spirit. You know? So they're, they're trying to play both sides of the fence, if you will, right? They're acquiring Russian technology, applying for BRICS membership as well, things and such, man. So it's almost like they're trying to just get in where they can fit in, you know? So we'll continue on here and take a look at right here now. Okay, now they're trying to save face and... You got this guy right here, President Recep Tayyip 
Erdogan on Thursday threw Turkey's support behind Ukraine and warned of the danger of another Chernobyl disaster erupting at a nuclear power plant held by invading Russian forces. Right, because that's a major concern right now, is that um, they're worried that there's going to be some severe damage at their at their Ukrainian nuclear power sites and that there will be another disaster. So that's something that's, uh, you know, drawing up a lot of concern, okay, from a lot of different parties. But uh, so it says right here that the um, Turkish leader met with Ukrainian counterpart Volodymyr Zelensky in Lviv uh, just two weeks after flying to Sochi for talks with Russian President Vladimir Putin during which the two sides pledge to boost economic cooperation. All right, so there they are. He's making backdoor deals, you know, and stating that they're going to boost the economic cooperation between the Turkish and the Russian. Yeah, he, then he goes in, in uh, you know, trying to play the middleman, if you will, right? Trying to save face once again, stating his support for the Ukraine. All right, so it says, while continuing our efforts to find a solution, we remain on the side of our Ukraine friends. Mm-hmm. So to be continued, right? Okay. So as you see, you know, down here, okay, we are worried. We do not want another Chernobyl, said the Turkish leader. All right? And then it says they're here down below. It even says we discussed the exchange of prisoners of war and our initiatives in this regard. We will continue to talk about that with Mr. Putin. I'm trying to trying to play the middleman here. Now, going on. So this is uh obviously something that we translated now this is the prime minister okay of mongolia right okay which is a neighboring country of china so a prime minister says l oyun erden met with wang yi says member of the state council of china and minister of foreign affairs the meeting continued at 3 30 and the parties finally agreed on the financing of the erden erden burin erden burin HPP, which is a hydropower plant project, HPP, hydropower plant, and the border connection of, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that, uh, port railway, so a neighboring area, okay, and the, uh, the connection of a port railway, so more or less connecting their two countries, if you will, all right, of course here, okay, here's more on it, okay, so it says the Urdan hydropower plant project in western Mongolia, okay, so it goes down, as you read, it says uh, construction was due to start back in April. Okay, so the project was financed. Okay, it was they agreed on the financing of it, and of course, who's going to be financing it, right? So it says construction is due to be carried out by a statewide-owned Chinese engineering company, Power China, and it is being financed through a one uh, one billion soft loan given by China, right? So it's a loan, it's financed, and it's going to be engineered and built by the Chinese, right? So the Chinese, okay, the Moabites, it's their biblical nationality, okay, Moab, they are building up allies, okay? So again, right here, this was uh, August 7th, okay, when, when that was released. So the Moabites are building up their alliances, right? So we'll, can, we'll go back to the scriptures real quick. Just zoom in, man, and that's... Uh, it's, uh, control a vast uh, region there you know Mongolia is a vast uh, body of uh, land there mm -hmm. right in between you know the north of China and Russia yeah, so they're, they're you know right there sandwiched in between Russia and China so that would give uh, China and Russia a lot of terrain to control mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely exactly man so they're building up that body right there and uh, I'm going to read from the book of Isaiah, chapter 13, and verse 2. It says, Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain, and exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand, that they may go into the gates of the nobles. Right, man? So they're going to be, you know, coming into, ultimately going to be coming for Babylon America, coming to make her a spoil. Okay? But but they, they're getting the on sign, right? They're getting ready, man. They, you know, they're... Uh, you know, all geared up and, and, and they're trying to align themselves all on one accord, ultimately to come against the NATO EU nations and against Babylon America. Okay, so Isaiah 13 and 3 says, I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger 
right? So the term indignation going into righteous anger. Okay, it says, even them that rejoice in my highness, right? So when the Heavenly Father puts the spirit on these nations and these mighty ones, right, to come against Babylon America, okay, they're, they're going to be doing the will of the Heavenly Father, okay? They think they're doing it on their own accord, but really it's the Heavenly Father working the right hand and the left, okay? Ultimately, he's, he's putting the spirit on these nations to come against Babylon America once again, okay? Coming to, coming to make her a spoil, right? So again, just as we read in the book of Joel, okay? So all these nations, the mighty ones, or the let the weak say I am strong, so on and so forth, you know? They're having these, uh, these other nations build them up. In particular, the guard, pursuant to Ezekiel chapter 38, you know, Russia is playing the guard to these nations, okay? And they're helping to sustain each other economically, and uh and militarily as well uh, i say at 13 and 4 the noise of a multitude in the mountains like as of a great people a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together right again assembled right so they're gathered together it said the adawan yahweh Bahashem yahweh shai of hosts so the lord of armies mustereth the host of the battle that's right so he's putting the spirit on these nations, man, to come to war. We'll, do, we'll pull up something here from uh, yeah, pull something here from Isaiah. Yeah, this is uh, Isaiah seventeen and twelve. Woe to the multitude of many people which make a noise like the noise of the seas and to the rushing of nations that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. Mm -hmm. So again, that multitude, right? So coming together and, and uh, you know, that loud noise, right? Coming together and ultimately to make war, right? So that rushing, that noise, okay? That's right, and you can hear that noise of war growing louder and louder, like the, the noise of a rushing of water. You know how near it's getting by the sound so we, we know that these uh these days here are fastly approaching mm -hmm. that's right and it says uh isaiah thir 17 and 13 the nations shall rush like the rushing of many waters but the most high shall rebuke them and they shall flee far off and shall be chased as the chaff of the mountains before the wind and like a rolling thing before the whirlwind mm -hmm. Right. So ultimately, they're going to fulfill the will of the Heavenly Father. And then the Heavenly Father is going to, you know, ultimately put these the, the armies down, man. Put, you know, starting with Hamashiach Yahawashai and the chariots, the holy angels, okay, returning. They're ultimately going to fulfill the will of the Heavenly Father. And then that's when they're, they're going to turn and look to make war, okay, with Hamashiach Yahawashai and, and the holy angels, the chariots. But ultimately, that's right. And that's speaking on the war in the heavens pursuant to the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. You know, they're making war with uh, the archangel Michael and the holy angels, the chariots of the Most High. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, you know, once Babylon is destroyed here and the uh, Valley of Yahushaphat is, you know, that third woe is going on in the Middle East, that is when they will stop, um, you know, fighting each other and fight the chariots of the Most High. You know, and that'll be after the deliverance of the elect. And I'm going to continue here with Isaiah 17 and 14. And behold, at evening tide, trouble. And before the morning, he is not. This is the portion of them that spoil us and the lot of them that rob us. That's right. And who's that, that spoiler? The one that's robbed us, man. That's Esau of Edom. That's right. You saw him being self-proclaimed white man. The devil mm -hmm. the Bible speaks of. That's, That's right. right, man. So in the morning, he is not right. Going to be done away with, okay? Going to be put into, you know, those who survive, man. Going to be the first fruits of captivity. You know? But ultimately, after serving that, after their 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 sentence, if you will, okay? After serving that that sentence in the kingdom to come, okay? After serving their captivity, you saw them. They're not going to have no mercy from y'all, Bashem Yahweh Shai. And they're going to be ultimately done away with for good. So now we'll turn over to a couple more articles. Insider Paper reports 
It says Indonesia and the U.S. troops hold live fire drill as China tensions mount. All right, so it says thousands of troops from Indonesia, the U.S., and allies held a live fire drill. And this was uh, last week, so this is reported August 12th. So, so it says Friday as part of what a top U.S. general said was Washington's efforts to prevent a regional conflict after China's destabilizing actions around Taiwan. All right, okay. So this is the exercise in Indonesia known as Super Garda Shield, or likely Guard, okay, came after Beijing staged unprecedented war games around Taiwan, which it claims is part of their territory. Last week, as a furious reaction to U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit to the self-ruled democracy. All right, so again, you know, they condemned... You know, uh, the Chinese condemned the visit, okay, as did other countries, including North Korea, okay, so on and so forth. So, of course, with, when they have, uh, you know, the Chinese have the support of the Russians, okay, North Korea is, is uh, also standing in, in that same, uh, you know, in that same position, okay. And also recently, I believe uh, it was uh, Syria that also stated their support uh, of China in that matter, okay, so... You're getting all these countries that are gathering and standing in unison. Right, so that's pretty much the meat of that. Now, of course, again, the U.S. is looking to build alliances and strengthen ties, okay, as is, you know, as are China, you know, the Moabites, the Russians, so on and so forth, right? So now, going into this insider paper reports, same day, August 12th, U.S. to boost Taiwan trade, right? So it says that the United States is responding to China's provocative behavior on Taiwan by boosting trade with a democratically run island and insisting on right of air and sea passage through tents, through these the tense straits, the White House said. All right. So how did what what how do they react? Okay, Russia, uh, China claiming that they have, you know, ownership if you will of the Taiwan Strait, okay, and whatnot, and all the tensions that are rising. What do they do? They go and make these deals. Okay. That's right, man. And uh, China's not not going to take that kindly, man. Mm -hmm. They're over here, uh, you know, U.S. is trying to uh, act like they're defending Taiwan to make them their own, uh, you know, independent land. But really, they're, they're devious, man. You know, it's Esau. He's a deceiver, man. Mm -hmm. He's really got his own motive. And mm -hmm. his own motive being to have right of air and passage sea passage through those straits mm -hmm. which give him uh you know control mm -hmm. over trade and also the ability to stay close to china mm -hmm. that's but, right you know him trying to uh say like no you this, this taiwan's not yours you can't have it and they need to be their own but really they want to have the power over taiwan mm -hmm. the u.s speaking of mm-hmm kind of yeah, and they're using... Mm, that's some real backdoor shit right there, man. Mm -hmm. That's right, man. The way the U.S. Is, is using the Ukraine right now, and other countries are using Ukraine in this proxy war, okay? They're looking to do the same and uh, use Taiwan that way against the Chinese because they, they, they see them as expendable, man. They're, they see them as a chess piece when really they're all chess pieces of Yahweh Bashkin, Yahweh Shai. You know, so more or less, yeah, it says that one of the representatives okay um this is you know saying quote unquote we would like to continue to deepen our ties with taiwan including through continuing to advance our economic and trade relationship for example we are developing an ambitious roadmap for trade negotiations which we intend to announce in the coming days all right so they they're, they're definitely flexing against china against the moabites okay so this is from militarytimes.com. Okay, just to kind of sum it up, they held uh, war games, um, you know, and, and uh, you know, they it goes into it. It's it's uh, pretty deep. So the article is a little lengthy, but I'll just kind of sum it up in the sense that they had different uh, people from different platforms, if you will. Okay, um, that goes into like simulations and whatnot. Okay, different types of, of war games, right? So. More or less, they're stating that they won, the, the U.S. won, but certain things transpired, okay? But the, the point really is that these things are taking place. They're anticipating these types of, this type of conflict, okay? So, 
Uh, I just want to kind of bring out that point is that these things are taking place. Okay. The, again, the article is a little lengthy, but it just goes into different scenarios, losses, and different things that take place ultimately through these simulations. So, brothers and sisters, look that up if you're more interested. But um, going into this now, this is from Disclosed TV. Okay, this is August 14th. So it says, that, of course, after the Pelosi visit to Taiwan, so what do they do? They send another one back. Okay. So they send back more American diplomats, quote unquote. Right. So this is uh, landing here. Okay. So they had, uh, you know, Senator, you know, Senator Marquis. Right. Looks like he's from Massachusetts. Okay. So this guy here from, uh, yeah, California. Okay. This guy here from Virginia. And uh, America Samoa. Right. So, of course, you got them landing here. Here's a picture of them. Okay, meeting with uh, different representatives in Taiwan. So there you go. You got Pelosi that that, that goes and, and uh, you know, she done pissed off a lot of people, man, with that visit. Even a lot of Americans, okay, who didn't agree with her going to visit. And now what do they do? They go and send back more people. Okay, man, insider paper. U.S. congressional delegation arrives in Taiwan on heels of the Pelosi visit. So it says again just to reiterate that fact okay the delegation arrived in taiwan last sunday officials said days after china held military drills around the island in retaliation for u.s house speaker nancy pelosi's visit right so after holding massive you know drills launching off missiles you know so on and so forth man what do they do they go and send back more individuals to go and provoke okay the the, the moabites man so-called chinese man okay We'll go back into the scriptures now. This is a reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 13 and verse 5. It says, They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Adawan, Yahweh, and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. That's right, man. That's right. And he adds that indignation, that righteous anger towards Esau of Edom and the sinful kingdom being here in Babylon, America. Mm-hmm. That's right, man. What are the and weapons? Those weapons of his warfare are going to be these other countries coming up with those hypersonic missiles, you know, um, surrounding Babylon, man, uh, pursuant to the uh, book of uh, Jeremiah 50 and 51. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, they're, they're going to encamp it around uh, Babylon, surrounding it. Mm -hmm. But sure. uh, this is the uh, book of Isaiah, chapter 24 and verse 1. Behold, the Adawan, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, maketh the earth empty and maketh it waste and turneth it upside down and scatter abroad the inhabitants thereof. Mm -hmm. That's right, man. So during these times, man, ultimately it's going to make Babylon America desolate. Okay? They're going to make it a waste, man. And then turning, turning things upside down, man. Okay? Because he's the potter. Right? And we are the clay, man. Okay, so you know, Yahweh Shem is going to turn this thing up and ultimately, again, That's send those right. weapons of his indignation. And, you know, this place has been a, a long time uh, hammer of the earth, uh, according to Jeremiah 51. You know, and uh, it's been long, t long uh, in power, man. You know, since these uh, Edomites used Jake to build this thing up, but uh, the Most High is turning this thing upside down by destroying the power of the earth, the hammer of the earth. By breaking it asunder and scattering the inhabitants thereof because you're going to see uh, many of these people flee um, back into their own uh, countries you know mm -hmm. the the people shall uh, go into their own land mm -hmm. uh, the scriptures say in a few different books re-emphasizing the same thing uh, before Babylon is destroyed here that many people are going to leave into their own countries mm -hmm. But also, he's going to scatter, uh, he's going to uh, bring back the elect, you know? He's going to bring the elect back into the land of our forefathers. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right, man. And this is uh, Isaiah 34 and verse 2. 
for the indignation of the Adawan is upon all nations and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. Woo! Sorry, man. So again, the righteous anger of the Adawan Yahweh is upon all nations, right? So he's going to, again, use these nations to come up against Babylon America. Then ultimately, he's going to serve them their judgment. That's right. Many, many, many shall be slayed in that third woe, the valley of Yahweh Shaphat. Mm -hmm. When they try to come up against the chariots, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai and the angels, the chariots and the archangel Michael, man. Mm -hmm. many of them are going to be slaughtered. And afterward, the rest of them shall go into captivity. Mm -hmm. Right. We'll flip back over now. And now again, as as was was read, you know, and announced, you know, regarding these um, actions that Chinese, the Chinese, the Moabites took after that Pelosi visit to Taiwan. Okay, so of course the U.S. you know commander says China missile over Taiwan must be contested. Okay. So it says that uh, they refer to it as a quote unquote gorilla in the room that has to be contested. A top U.S. military commander said on Tuesday. Right. So it says, no, this was again in, in response to the drills that China had placed in, including sending uh, firing ballistic missiles. OK. Over Taiwan and near the near Japan, actually. So that's something that um, ultimately drew a lot of con major concern from representatives in Japan. OK. But again, it says that, quote unquote, if we just allow that to happen and we don't contest that, that'll be the next norm. It's irresponsible to launch missiles over Taiwan into international waters where the shipping lanes, uh, what says where free shipping operates. Right. So they're condemning the actions. Mm -hmm. Now, further down, it says right here, if you don't challenge it, all of a sudden it can become just like the islands in the South China Sea that have now become military outposts they are they now are full functioning military outposts that have missiles on them large runways hangars radars listening posts mm -hmm. so they they're concerned that the chinese will ultimately take it over continuing on it says insider paper reports china conducts fresh drills around taiwan as u.s lawmakers visit so it says China staged fresh military drills around Taiwan on Monday, slamming a new visit by U.S. lawmakers to the island days after a similar trip by House Speaker Nancy Pelosi triggered a furious response from Beijing. Right? So it says the unannounced two-day trip by senior members of Congress prompted China to renew its rhetoric that it would, quote-unquote, prepare for war over Taiwan, a self-ruled democracy that Beijing's leaders claim and have vowed to one day seize. Mm -hmm, that's right. I said, okay, you want to send another party back? You, you think you, but we just condemned that visit. You saw what we did after you guys brought over Pelosi. Y'all want to bring over some more? Okay, well, well, guess what? So, yeah, man, they, they went on to uh, hold new drills. Okay. Now, it says, uh, I just want to see. No, it says uh, it, it is added. That its forces had detected 30 Chinese planes and five ships operating around the strait on Monday. Of those, 15 planes crossed the median line, an unofficial demarcation that Beijing does not recognize. That's right, man. So they're coming into their territory, if you will, okay? And uh, they're, they're making it known, and, and uh, that's a very quick response, okay? So, uh, yeah, man, they, they, they ain't playing no games, man. You know, that's pretty much the meat of it. Okay, just want to, you know, so what, now, how does Taiwan respond? Inside a paper, August 17th, says Taiwan shows off most advanced fighter jet after China drills. All right, so Taiwan displayed on Wednesday, two days after, right, right um, says its most advanced fighter jet, the missile-equipped F-16V, in a rare nighttime demonstration in the wake of China's unprecedented military drills around the island. So it says Beijing staged days of air and sea drills around the Taiwan Strait this month after visits by U.S. Speaker Nancy Pelosi and a congressional delegation to the self-ruled island territory. And so they went on, okay, and uh, it says it carried out drills to simulate defense 
against invasion by China. And on Wednesday, Air Force personnel loaded an F-16V fighter with U.S.-made anti-ship missile in a combat readiness, quote-unquote, exercise at an air base in eastern Hualien County. So like if I'm mispronouncing that, and it says six F-16Vs later took off for night reconnaissance and training missions, including two armed with missiles, according to Taiwan's Air Force. And so it says, quote unquote, in the face of the threat from the Chinese Communist forces, recent military exercises, we have stayed vigilant while establishing the concept of battlefields everywhere and training any time to ensure national security. So that's pretty much the meat off of that. OK, so everyone's you know, they're They're moving, man. You know, they're, they're moving these pieces, man. And, and you know. Although the uh, there's not an official conflict yet, they're they're flexing. They're continuing to try to one up each other, right? So again, this is just a reiteration. Okay, U.S. Taiwan agree to trade talks in face of growing China coercion. Right. So this was uh, today, August 18th. Okay. So again, just reiterating the uh, the trade talks that we just mentioned. You know, through that other article, but um. You know, it says that, quote unquote, we welcome this opportunity to deepen economic collaboration between our two freedom loving countries while shaping a new model for trade cooperation in the Indo Pacific. All right. So it says that Taipei's representative in Washington wrote, We welcome this announcement and Taiwan's ready to start. Woo. Sorry, man. Sorry, man. So we will continue to, uh, you know, keep an eye on this, okay? Okay, so uh, that's pretty much the point. Once again, don't want to get too far into it, but again, they're following through on these things. Okay, and what does the Chinese do? You know, just uh, this was August fifteenth. Okay, and now again, talking about creating alliances and and doing things abroad. Okay, this is a Chinese spy ship. So Yuan Wang Five reaches Sri Lanka. Right, so it says the objective of this ship is to study Indian naval assets, okay, in the to- topo- topography, the water bath, of the Bay of Bengal in case China needs to deploy subs to sub attack cities like Chennai, Lizag, etc. during a war. Right, so they and, are. Uh, yeah, I believe uh, topography is when you are able to uh, map the waters, the oceans. Beautiful. That's right, man. So they're gearing up, man, for in a lot of different areas. In the Bay of Bengal, you know, that's uh, that's uh, south of uh, India and uh, Bangladesh. Mm-hmm. That's right, man. So these, these things are turning up. Now we'll continue on here in the book of Isaiah 13, and verse 6, which reads, Howl ye, for the day of the Adawan Yahweh is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. That's right. So it's going to come as a destruction, man. Alashadia, the almighty power, that terrible demon-like power, okay, is coming to lay down judgment, okay? So it's going to create, stir up this conflict. And ultimately, it's going to come here to Babylon America, Wa, the valley of Yahweh Shapat, which is Yahweh's decision, Yahweh's judgment. And we'll pull up a few precepts here just to back it up. And take it away, Brother Bernard. Yeah, this is uh, the book of Zephaniah 1 and 7. It says, Hold thy peace at the presence of the Adawan, Yahweh, for the day of the Lord is at hand. For the Adawan hath prepared a sacrifice, he hath bid his guests. Mm -hmm. That's right, and that sacrifice here in Basra, man. All right, as the scriptures speak of, you know. I believe it's the book of uh well it says the book of Isaiah as well. Mm-hmm. The, that sacrifice in Basra and Idumia, great slaughter in Idumia, roughly mm-hmm. paraphrasing that. That's right, man. It says, um, and it shall come to pass in the day of the Adawan's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed in strange with strange apparel. Mm-hmm. That's right, man. So all those that are not of the elect are going to be punished here in Babylon. 
you know, he hath bid his guests to the marriage, you know, being his elect. Mm -hmm. They're not having on that wedding garment. Having on that, that wedding garment. Mm -hmm. This truth. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. the armor of the Adewan Yahweh mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Garments of white. Mm -hmm. Kind. And it says, uh, in the same day also will I punish all those that leap on the threshold, which fill their master's houses with violence and deceit. And it shall come to pass in that day, said the Adawan, that there shall be the noise of a cry from the fish gate, and a howling from the second, and a great crashing from the hills. All right, so that just, you know, speaks that it's going to be broad. You know, it's going to be in, in many areas, right? The fish gate, the howling from the second, so being a different section of, of the land. Mm -hmm. Okay, a great crashing from the hills, right? So from the fish gate all the way up to the hills. Okay, the Adawan, Yahweh Bashim is going to be a great noise of a cry. That's right, man. Right, man. So that's destruction, man. That's judgment. And this is uh, Joel 1 and 15. At last, for the day of the Adawan is at hand and is a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. Woo! Okay, man, and it's drawing nigh, it's drawing close. Okay, these things are coming, you know, soon to come to pass. Now we hasten the day, the return of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, and the day of the Adawan's, you know, fulfillment of, of the prophecy, man, to, to lay down judgment and, and uh, you know, lay down that vengeance, the wrath of his indignation. I'm going to continue on here from the book of Isaiah, chapter 13, and verse 7. It says, Therefore, shall all hands be faint and every man's heart shall melt all right man so this hand's gonna grow weak okay every man's heart his mind okay shall melt right because they're not gonna know what to do they're gonna be perplexed they're gonna be confused without answers mm -hmm. okay yeah shall melt with fear mm-hmm kind of. you know so. be that deer in the headlights mm-hmm kind of. scriptures speak into that that's right man their heart shall melt of fear you know roughly paraphrasing that you know, and this is Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 8. And they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows shall overtake them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. Right? That's right. And I believe that's also uh, reiterated in uh, Second Ezra, the uh, 15th chapter or 16, one of those two. That's right, man. The book of Second Ezra also speaks of that. Yeah, you're right. That's yeah, kind of. And, uh, you know, that again, that woman that travaileth is going into a woman in labor pains. Okay, a pregnant woman. So you can imagine that kind of pain, right? So it says, they shall be amazed at one another. Their faces shall be as flames. That's right, man. So that thermonuclear hypersonic destruction, the chariot fire. Okay, that stuff coming down. Okay, their faces shall be as flames. Okay. You know, brothers also go into that uh, that Terminator 2 Judgment Day. You know, that's the Sarah Connor scene, watching that those missiles lay down and come down, and you're watching that that fireman tear up the city, and then ultimately she turns into a skeleton holding onto that fence. That's right, and that's uh, what is that Zephaniah, where it goes into that. You know, their eyes shall melt, <laughs> and that's the spirit yeah. there, man. You know, we got judgment. The sirens going out there. Woo! Call all y'all bashim y'all shy, man. You know? There's judgment laying down. Heavenly Father bringing judgment you somewhere. Say, oh, Zephaniah, their eyes shall consume away in their holes. Khan. That's <laughs> right, man. Talking about that heat, man. And yeah, their tongues as well, Khan. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right, man. That's right. Eyes shall consume in their holes, man. Woo! That's right, man. Beautiful. So going into a few other articles here. Insider paper. It says August 15th, Japanese ministers anger China, South Korea with war shrine visit. All right, so it says two Japanese ministers paid respects Monday at a controversial war shrine infuriating China and South Korea, where the site is seen as a symbol of past militarism, especially during World War II. Now, it says they hear the Yash, Yasukuni Shrine in Tokyo honors 2.5 million war dead, mostly Japanese, who perished since the light the late 19th century, but it also enshrines convicted war criminals. Okay? 
So it says, trips to the shrine by government officials have long angered countries that suffered at the hands of the Japanese military before and during the war, particularly South Korea and China. Now, Chinese Foreign Minister uh, Ministry spokes, uh, spokesman Wang Wenbin says, reacted angrily to, to Monday's visits, calling them a quote-unquote serious provocation. Now it says, China urges Japan to seriously learn from history, cut off militarism, and avoid further losing trust with its Asian neighbors and the international community. All right, so it says the South Korean government also expressed, quote-unquote, deep disappointment at the visit to the shrine, quote-unquote, which glorifies Japan's past wars of aggression and enshrined war criminals. All right, so, you know, not only angering China, but also South Korea, so Japan. Japan, okay, starting to stir up some pots here. Inside our paper, August 15th, Russia and North Korea planning to strengthen relationships, state media reports. All right, so it says uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin and North Korean leader Kim Jong un intend to strengthen their diplomatic ties, according to state media. Okay, so it says it here Putin sent his greetings to Kim on the anniversary, anniversary of Korea's liberation from Japanese colonial rule writing that the two countries share a tradition of bilateral friendship and cooperation, okay? So, of course, uh, that's, uh, you know, uh, it says at the bottom, according to North Korean reports, Kim also sent a greeting to message to Putin saying friendly relations, quote-unquote, will become stronger in all areas as a result of the agreements reached in the two countries' April 2019 summit in Vladivostok. Say Vladivostok, Vostok, Salake, you gotta mispronounce that, butcher it in Russia. All right, so in 2019, they had a summit in Russia where they made some agreements. Okay. So, of course, gonna reiterate that here in this report. It says North Korea's camp receives congratulatory letter from head of Russian back Donetsk, right? So it says uh, North Korean leader Kim Jong un received a message from the head of Russian back Donetsk region in eastern Ukraine. Right, so it says Denis or Denise Pushilin, Denis Pushilin, leader of the breakaway separatist entity, extended his quote unquote heartfelt congratulations to Kim in the letter on the occasion of Korea's liberation anniversary on August 15th. The message said that the past history of the Korean people was filled with trials and there were many difficulties on the road to freedom, but the Korean people overcame uh, them bravely and proudly. All right, so it says. Says right there, this the message then expressed the conviction that an equally beneficial bilateral cooperation will be achieved between Donetsk and the North. <whistles> right. Here, insider paper reports August 17th, North Korea fires two cruise missiles. Seoul says, right? Seoul being in uh, South Korea, uh, says North Korea fired two cruise missiles Wednesday. Seoul's Defense Ministry says, ending a month-long lull in Pyongyang's record-breaking state of weapons test this year. The isolated nation had not tested a, has not tested a cruise missile, which are not banned under the UN sanctions on Pyongyang since January. All right, so it says the last time North Korea conducted a weapons test was July 10th. Okay, they fired multiple rocket launchers, right? So they, they detected two of them, okay? So they are... We're analyzing the launches, but point being, North Korea is gearing up. Okay, so we'll go back into it's back in the book of Isaiah here, chapter 13, and verse 9. It says, Behold, the day of the Adawan, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. That's right. So not only for the Esau of Edom, the self-proclaimed white man, the heathen nations, so on and so forth, but two-thirds of our people, pursuant to Zechariah 13 and 8. Okay? Two-thirds of our people are going to receive the punishment thereof, man. Okay? That judgment. And uh, let's go ahead and pull something up real quick just to add on to that. See, and this is a uh, book of Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 21 for the upright shall dwell in the land and the perfect shall remain in it but the wicked shall be cut off from the earth and the transgressors 
shall be rooted out of it. That's right, man. So the upright shall dwell in the land, right? So the elect, the hopeful elect right now, but ultimately the elect will dwell in the land of our forefathers, okay? The perfect, right? That term perfect also goes into blameless, right? So who are those who are found worthy, okay? Through the blood of Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, through the spirit of Yahweh Hashim, Yahweh Shai, through their faith and their works, man, those who are worthy of election and salvation, okay? So they're going to remain, right? They're going to be changed. They're going to be given that salvation, man. But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth and the transgressors, right? So those who are continuously abounding in, in iniquity, sin upon sin, right? Transgressing the law of Yahweh Hashim, Yahweh Shai, the law, statutes, and commandments, which is sin, right? Sin is transgression of the law. So they shall be rooted out, okay? Now going back to Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 10. It says, For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. That's right, man. So they're not going to give their light. It's going to be that thermonuclear destruction, that fallout, right? That smoke rising, okay? All that stuff that's going to be, uh, you know, going into the atmosphere, man. All the that's elements right. melting with fervent heat, so on and so forth, man. That's right, man. Nuclear fallout can last for years. Mm hmm That's right. Mm hmm, mm -hmm. It's uh, reading from the book of Joel 2 and 30. And I will show wonders in the heavens and the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Adawan, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, come. Mm -hmm. That's right, man. And, you know, those things, you know, we see little signs here and there, you know, blood moons, quote unquote, and things as such. But ultimately, it's going to be those signs in the heavens that thermonuclear destruction that fallout as Akhenaten just mentioned you know that smoke rising right pillars of smoke right fire okay the sun shall not shall be turned into darkness that's okay. right covered mm -hmm. with smoke yep. from these missiles here you know mm -hmm. that's right nuclear fallout mm -hmm. that's right and these things will come to pass I'm gonna hop back over real quick so Insider paper reports Putin pushing Russian combat tested arms for export. Right? So he's he's uh you know on Monday promoted Russian weapons to his foreign allies, saying they had all been tested on the field of battle. Quote unquote, we are ready to offer allies and partners the most modern types of weapons, from small arms to armored vehicles and artillery, combat aircraft, and unmanned aerial vehicles. That's right, man. So it says uh it says Russian weapons are valued by military professionals for their reliability, quality, and most importantly, high efficiency. All right, so it says almost all of them have been used in real combat operations more than once. That's right, man. So again, the bear, right? The guard, okay, pursuant to Ezekiel 38, looking to take care of their allies. Now, this is out of zerohedge.com. From August 15th, okay, nuclear deal increasingly unlikely as Iran strengthens ties with Russia, right? So, you know, I won't go too far into the article just for, uh, you know, just for, just for time's sake. Um, but this is a good read, brothers and sisters, want to check this out from zerohedge.com, okay? Um, but more or less it goes into Iranians, uh, Iran's, you know, generation production, if you will, of high-grade, uh, you know, plutonium and, and and weapons as such, because you know they are uh, virtually on the ver they're on the verge really of of being able to create their own quote-unquote weapons of mass destruction, you know, and with the uh, systems that are going to be uh, you know implemented, if you will, and, and bought in through Russia, okay, they're going to be able to complete these things. Now I'll go down and, and read. Uh, Something here says Russia deepening an alliance with Iran is something that the whole world should look at and see as a profound threat, quote unquote. OK, and that's from a U.S. Uh, State Department spokesman. OK, now it says what the uh, says what the Kayam satellite was launched for is is to provide the final piece of the missile guidance system that Russia and Iran have been working on for years. This one relating to improving the accuracy of missiles 
by up to 25% for short and medium range missiles and by up to 70% for long range missiles, according to an Iranian source. All right, so in the past few years, they've been working on these, uh, you know, satellite systems and, and Iran with the support and assistance of the oversight, you know, as well, if you will, of, of Russia, okay, and not necessarily oversight, but they've been uh, aided, okay? So the point being is this, Iran is now, you know, able to, is, is going to be ready, they're on the verge of having these systems in place, you know, to be able to carry out their own, you know, ICBM, hypersonic missile type, you know, on that level, okay, of, of uh, launches. Okay, so again, Russia, the guard, looking out for the best interests of their allies. Of course, Iran recently applying for BRICS membership. Okay, so Israeli strike hits Iranian target near Russia's Mediterranean bases. All right, so so Iran is is more or less you can look at him as a friendly and or ally of Russia, right? So Israel, the, the tensions between Israel and Iran are very high. So this is a report from August 14th. It says Israel hit Iranian targets in a series of strikes on Sunday that near the ancestral home region of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad and close to the Russians' main Syrian bases on the Mediterranean coast, regional intelligence and Syrian military sources said. Right? So it says uh, Syrian army earlier said that three servicemen were killed and three were wounded in two simultaneous Israeli attacks south of the province of Tartus or Tartos and another in the capital of Damascus. Okay. So more or less they're carrying out targets, okay, or strikes against Iranian targets. Okay. So it says Israel has staged hundreds of strikes against alleged Iranian targets in recent years, but has mostly avoided hitting the coastal provinces where Russia Russia's main military assets are concentrated. All right, so as you read down now, okay, the tensions um, it says, it says you, uh, tensions have mounted between Israel and Russia over the former's condemnation of the Ukraine war and the latter's scrutiny of a Jewish immigration agency. Israel last month said its military jets came under Russian anti-aircraft fire over Syria in May, but they missed their target, describing the confrontation as a one-off incident, right? Because it wasn't just... Russian artillery and uh, weaponry that was used, but it was actually Russian personnel that were shooting at those, uh, you know, Israeli jets. Now, what the report stated is that they may have just given them a warning shot, if you will, missed intentionally, just to let them know that they're at their breaking point with them and that the tensions are, are that high to the point where the Russians themselves are getting ready to take action against Israel, the Israelis, okay? The little hatters, if you will, man. The people that are occupying the Holy Land now. Okay? Amalek. So, of course, now you get Turkey and Israel are normalizing ties again. Now they have, you know, Turkey is not, not uh, you know, signing off on, on what their, their, their treatment of the Palestinians and whatnot, okay? So they, they have uh, disagreements there, okay? Because, of course, as you go down to read, it says that uh, Turkish-Israeli relations have deteriorated periodically over the last 15 years, in particular, uh, particularly due to Israeli occupation violence against the Palestinians, right? So it says, uh, quote-unquote, as we have always said, we will continue to defend the rights of Palestinians. But they are looking to, you know, normalize their relationships, if you will, with Israel, Okay. Okay, so... Going into Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 11. Now it says, And I will punish the world for all their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. Again, sin upon sin. It says, And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. Man, right, man. So the ter let's, let's go ahead and get that just for edification's sake. The haughtiness, right? Get it from the Strong's Hebrew. Strong's H, thirteen forty six. Gava. Gava. Gava, right? Which goes into pride, 
a rising up, okay? Arrogance, right? Their excellency, if you will, a highness, proud. Yeah, man, so they're pride. That's right. Mm -hmm. There's none more proud than Esau of Edom and uh, these, uh, you know, these Babylonians, man. Their pride, thinking that she will uh, never, uh, you know, fall. Uh, saying that she, she'll be no widow. Mm -hmm. That's right. Pursuant to the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, man, what does the scripture say? That uh, pride cometh before the fall and a haughty spirit before destruction. Uh, yeah, roughly paraphrasing. That's right, man. So those those proud spirits, man, are going to be brought down, man, into destruction. You know, will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. That's right, man. So they think themselves to be in a high state now, but they're going to be brought very low into into the pit, man, into death and into captivity. So I'll continue on with a few of their uh, articles real quick. Uh, Putin accusing the U.S. of trying to prolong the U.A. the Ukraine conflict, right? So it says, the situation in Ukraine shows that the U.S. is trying to prolong this conflict, Putin said, addressing the opening ceremony of a security conference in Moscow. Washington is, quote-unquote, using the people of Ukraine as cannon fodder, <laughs> lashing out at the U.S. for supplying weapons to Kiev. That's right, man. So it's, you know, I don't want to pull too much off of that, right? But next article, U.S. News, Biden administration readies about $800 million dollars an additional security aid for Ukraine. And this is from August 18th. This is today. We got to turn up. Right? So President Joe Biden's administration is rating about $800 million in additional military aid to Ukraine and could announce more as soon as Friday. Right? So it goes on to say, Biden would authorize the assistance using his presidential drawdown authority, which allows the president to authorize the transfer of excess weapons from U.S. stocks. Right, and this power, this presidential drawdown authority, also allows him to bypass the um, the Congress, so he can sign out, sign off on it on his own. He doesn't need the approval of Congress. Of course, you know this, the Guardian reports China is sending uh, troops to Russia for joint week-long military drills. That's right. So, what they refer to as the uh, Vostok exercises. Okay, it says. Uh, you know, Chinese troops will travel to Russia for large military exercises amid heightened tensions over Moscow's invasion of Ukraine. That's right, man. So, this was just reported today as well. Okay. So, there's saying uh, the joint military exercises in Russia's Far East, which will include India, Belarus, Mongolia, right? Of course, Belarus with their close ties to Russia. Okay, India, which is uh, part of the BRICS nations. Mongolia with their, again, as was read in the article earlier their ties to china okay tajikistan tajikistan and other countries are held every four years but the week-long maneuvers will be presented by russia as a symbol of international support despite sanctions and other efforts to isolate the country due to its war with ukraine that's right so it's pretty much the meat off that okay again don't want to make it too long now of course here as well 816 so two days ago russia holding joint military drills in iran okay venezuela so it says while russia is holding joint military exercises with iran's revolutionary guard and other moscow allies in central iran venezuela is also hosting sniper military exercises with these countries that's right man so these war games these allies these things they're they're strengthening their ties okay Right, and Venezuela is a, a key point, you know. We know that uh, China uh, ha owns much of the uh, infrastructure, communications, and whatnot down there in uh, Latin America, showing, you know, uh, Russia and China's partnership, you know. Them holding those military drills in Venezuela shows that they are working hand-in-hand -hand with China. But... Venezuela being a very key point because just north of that are the uh, you know the West uh, Indies so to speak you know uh, you know not far from Puerto Rico uh, the Dominican Republic Cuba Florida you know being a, a very key point 
that uh, Russia has in encamping around Babylon. Mm -hmm. That's right. Beautiful point, man. Go on. And of course, while well, the Russia and the Chinese, okay, so all these BRICS nations, if you will, and, and their their allies, okay, who are coming up against these, uh, you know, NATO, EU, okay, and all their allies, they're they're all solidifying their stance, if you will, right? So this is from August 16th, U.S. South Korea to begin expanded military drills next week. All right, so it says they'll begin their biggest combined military training in years next week in the face of an increasingly aggressive North Korea, which has been ramping up weapons tests and threats of nuclear conflict against Seoul and Washington, the South Korean military said on Tuesday. All right? Okay, so that's pretty much the meat of that. It says the U.S. Department of Defense also said that the U.S., South Korean, and Japanese navies... There you go, Japan, bringing, getting, getting brought into it. Says took part in the missile warning and ballistic missile search and tracking exercises off the coast of Hawaii from August eighth to to the fourteenth. Right. So again, man, now you got the Japanese man with their uh, with their growing uh, concern over China and Taiwan. Okay. Now, of course, the U.S. is doing the same thing. You know, building, trying to build their alliances. Okay, and as you see here. You know, Finland says Russian fighter jets suspected of violating airspace. Now, this was today, August 18th. Okay, so it says two Russian fighter jets are believed to have violated Finnish airspace on Thursday. Finland's defense ministry said as the Nordic country seeks NATO membership following Moscow's invasion of Ukraine. So it says two Russian MIG-31 fighters are suspected of having violated Finnish airspace in the Gulf of Finland off Porvu. The ministry said in a statement that says the Finnish set up uh, sent up an operational flight mission to identify the aircraft and that the Finnish border guard has started a preliminary investigation. That's right. So, you know, then you get the Russian again, man, they're they're flexing, you know, they're they're definitely letting things know, man, as the Chinese are are uh, coming across the uh, coming into Taiwanese territory, if you will. Right. OK, now you got. Russia also flexing against Finland, who recently applied for NATO membership. Okay, and they're a bordering country, okay, of Russia. And also here, insider paper reports, August 17th, Germans spot Russian forces, quote unquote, in Mali after the French exit. All right, so it says German soldiers in Mali spotted several dozen suspected Russian security forces in the city of Gao uh, just as the French soldiers left the country, the German government said. On Wednesday, right? So it says the German ambassador in Bamako has contacted Mali's foreign minister about the suspected presence of Russian uniformed forces in Gao. Uh, it says uh, Gao is home to a contingent of German soldiers not far from the former base occupied by the French. Now, a Russian presence in the city would be a development that changes the mission environment, the spokesman said, adding that the government was also discussing the matter with the UN. That's right. So, you know, the French were withdrawing their troops, okay? It's still some uh, German military presence, right? But Mali is now, uh, we have to keep our eyes on, on that and to see if the Russians develop relationships, if you will, and a military presence in Mali. Okay, so it says German's government was also aware of an aircraft being used by Malian air armed forces that, quote unquote, could possibly be an aircraft. That was handed over by Russia. Whew. That's right. So. Sorry, man. So it says, quote, unquote, we have received information about that about 20 to 30 persons who were not associated with the Malian armed forces were seen loading and unloading this aircraft in a hangar. That's right. So to be continued. Okay. To be continued. Will Molly you know, ultimately apply for BRICS membership to be continued. So again, these people are strengthening their relationships with these other countries. And this is Isaiah 26 and verse 20. Come, my people, enter thou into my thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. Sorry, man. So that's what we, as the hopeful elect, we pray for is that we can 
be changed, be, be given that hedge of protection, the ultimate salvation through the chariots of salvation, man. The chariot, right. you know. And, uh, you know, the Most High calling his elect, his hidden ones. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, um, you know, you got to hide in the, the shadow of the Ottawa, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. in that strong tower, you mm -hmm. know, claim to be protected by Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai until this indignation be overpassed. That's right. Until this judgment be overpassed until, you know, you get beamed up onto that chariot, Lord willing. But That's we're going to have to uh, endure Jacob's trouble, you know, it's uh, sedition amongst men and, you know, everything that comes with that, man. All mm -hmm. these uh, plagues that the Lord is sending out right now. Mm -hmm. That's right. So we pray for that hedge of protection that we be beamed up, that we may hide ourselves within those chariots, man, where we'll be changed. That's right. But mm -hmm. first we have to... Uh, be protected through Jacob's trouble. That's right. So that's why we enter into the chambers and shut that door as a balcony, trying to hide in the stronghold of the Adawan by drawing near unto him. That's right. And it says, For behold, the Adawan cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. Mm -hmm. That's right. The devil has been revealed. All the secrets, you know, his history, all the blood he has on his hands, he can't wash it off, man. You know, everybody is seen, you know, what's going on here. And therefore, uh, you know, you got a nation rising against nation. The kingdom's divided against itself. The kingdom of uh, Esau, the sinful kingdom, you know, it, it shall not stand. You know, this thing is falling down being brought down by Yahweh Bashem Shai and by this word being brought to light. Mm -hmm. That's right. Pull this up here. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 2, verse 17. And the loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of men shall be made low, and the Adawan, Yahweh Bashem Shai alone shall be exalted in that day. So everyone's going to know, man. We will give all honor, glory, and praise to Yahweh Bashim as, as always. And in that very day, everyone's going to know the transition, okay? That time. The, the end of Esau's reign, man. The end of his time period, man. His allotted amount of time to rule the earth, okay? And, and with the sword, okay? Everyone's going to know that that time is up. And that the transition of, into the kingdom of, of righteousness, Okay? The kingdom of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai will yeah. be taking place. You're gonna have all these atheists, all these non-believers. Everybody is gonna see the true power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai that's coming with the destruction and the return of our Savior Yahweh Shai Mashiach and those hosts of uh, angels, man, in those chariots. And that's when uh, even the non-believers, these atheists, all these people that have uh, scoffed and mocked, are gonna know there is one true power. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, mm -hmm. and he will be exalted in that day. That's right. That's right. So, Adawan Ratazah, this uh, lesson has been edifying and comforting to the hopeful elect. As always, we want to close out by giving all praises to our power. Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai Bahasham Rakak Wadash. Double honors to our elder apostles, bishops of Great Millstone, who rule and teach well with sound doctrine. Shalom to all the like-minded brethren, teaching this word with truth and sincerity, pushing this word across all four winds, risking their lives and freedoms to do so. Shalom to the hopeful elect, the believers, all the Akim and the Aqua. Keep pushing for this truth until the end. Don't keep fighting the good fight of faith. Peace and blessings to you and your household. That's right. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah Barakatam to everybody tuning in. The water. The water. Well, Shalom. Shalom. Abad the ball. DTA. Soon. Kwam Yasharala. That's right. Shalom.